Hey guys, it's in the Off Kilter Crafter. I hope you're having a great day today. Today is January 1st, 2019. Happy New Year, everyone. I hope so far that your year has been great. And if you're catching this later in the year, I hope your year has been great too. Uh, it doesn't have to be the first day of the year for it to be a great year. Or a great day. I need to go back to bed, apparently. I apparently partied too hard last night. So thank you guys for joining me for this live event. I uh, really do appreciate it. Today we're going to be working on uh, a little bit of ATCs. For those of you who don't know what an ATC is, it is an artist trading card and they're usually about the size of a playing card. So two and a half inches by three and a half inches. And if you're interested in exchanging them, there's this group called the Art Sherpa Swap. And basically you can swap ATCs. I'm wearing an Art Sherpa shirt today in honor of the uh, Art Sherpa Swap group so if you're interested and want to become part of that swap group make sure to go down into the description there's a lot of information about how the swap group works what you need to do how it all works and all that kind of stuff and includes links to all the various places that you need to go in order to get all the details those are going to be listed down in the description below there are also links to the other um, ATC design team members I am a design team member for the art Sherpa swap group and uh, we also have some others uh, included in that. That's uh, Taz and uh, Mark Bergeron and Stephanie Bergeron and, of course, the Art Sherpa herself. So this month's theme is Awakening. And, um, yeah, I don't really know. I didn't really know how to, to put that into a tangible form where you could actually see that. So today we're going to kind of be exploring a little bit. So I'm going to jump over here into chat. If you're watching this on the replay, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon. So that way you get notified every time I go live. I'm going to jump over in chat for just a second and say hello to everyone. Hello! We have Beth, Renee, Julie, uh, Aness, uh, Katie, Nikki... All sorts of wonderful people. Thank you guys for joining me. I really do appreciate y'all being here and being a part of this. And we're going to go on this little art journey together today. And uh, Happy New Year to all of you. Madonna is here. Hello, Madonna. Happy New Year to you as well. Uh, if you're watching the replay, you can also check out the chat. Make sure to uh, check out the chat. It should be somewhere. It's either going to be over here or if the video is too big, it's going to be <laughs> down here somewhere. Something like that. Before we get, do get too far into it, I do want to give everybody a champagne toast. I hope your 2019 is even better than your 2018 and even better than a lot of the years in the past. I know 2018 for me and a lot of people was not a very good year at all. So I'm really hoping 2019 is a much better year. So toast to all of y'all for a better 2019. Ah, mm. The champagne's a little dry, but it'll, it'll do the job, right? Hope you've also had your Black Eyed Peeds. Um, I do enjoy holidays that we do get to celebrate internationally. And, of course, New Year's is one that is that you can enjoy internationally. So happy New Year's to all of you. So hello, Chris. Thank you guys. Pam's here. Thank you guys for joining me. So today I'm going to go on a little bit of an awakening journey. And um, I didn't quite know how to take this theme. And so I wanted to do something that was uh, an awakening for me. And what better way to start an awakening for the color of the year? This is Pantone's color of the year. You know, Pantone is that very prestigious color company and they choose what colors are going to be like the most used each year and uh, what they predict will be the most used each year. It usually ends up being they are kind of the ones that set the mood for what color is going to be most popular. And this year is Living Coral. So it's this kind of pinkish salmon, hibiscus, however you want to put it. The official name is Living Coral. Uh, and I wanted to use that color in an awakening of my artistic skills with it. So today we're going to be using some um, some uh, living coral. And uh, let me put my picture in picture in. There we go. So uh, distress oxides and distress inks have a color that is very, very close, if not spot on, except they call it abandoned coral instead of living coral. So it's pretty much the exact same color. And that's what I'm going to be using today in my artwork. Um, I was originally just going to start off with one art piece today, but I think we're going to end up working on two pieces. And we are going to be working with some texture paste today in today's ATCs, which will require some drying time. So we may have a little bit of time to chat and get things going. So uh, let's see. 
Although we don't do peas in the UK, new one on me. Yeah, so um, for those of you who are not in America, it's kind of a southern thing, really. Um, if you, you're supposed to eat black eyed peas on New Year's Day. That's supposed to give you good luck. So a lot of times we'll have black eyed peas with cornbread and that's kind of, it's, it's a real southern thing. Um, and since I'm here in Texas, that kind of fits the bill. So I ate my black eyed peas today and last night. So hopefully I have doubly the luck for the new year. Ian, where did you get the Art Sherpa shirt? Uh, I actually got it straight from the Art Sherpa when I was at her house for Thanksgiving. This was actually for, whoops, I almost fell out of my chair. This was for Made It Con, and I was lucky enough to get one of the leftover shirts that she had. So thank you to the Art Sherpa for doing that and let me have that. And as if you do want to ask me a question, please feel free to put it in all caps so that way it jumps out at my attention because I'm not always looking at chat. Also, guys, if I have, I noticed I went back and watched uh, my previous video. Uh, if there are any problems with my microphone, please let me know. Uh, I didn't see anybody in chat let me know the last time, so I didn't know that there was a problem. And I went back and watched the video, and I don't know if it was the electrical storm or what was going on, but I noticed that there was a problem with my microphone. So if you ever hear a problem with my microphone, since I'm the only one uh, here in the studio, studio. Just let me know and I'll see if I can fix it and make it a little better, bit better. Renee doesn't do uh, the peas. She doesn't like black eyed peas. That's okay. Doesn't that promise money in the new year? I think you're right on that one, Kathy. I think that's what it is. And it did not work last year. That's for sure. So anywho, all right, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go over here to my project. Uh, we're going to start off today. Uh, I'm going to start off on some Strathmore paper here. This is, this is actually for, um, oil painting, but I'm going to be using it for, um, for my ATC today. And it's in a linen finish. So it has a texture to it. I don't know if the close up cam is going to show that texture. It doesn't really show it too well because it's white on white, but there is a little bit of a texture to this cardstock, which I think will work out well whenever I am uh, working on this one today. First thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and take my Tombow Extreme Adhesive and I'm gonna go ahead and apply it straight down onto my cardboard backing. Honestly, I could probably, let's see, wait, did I do that right? Yes, I did that right. Um, honestly, I could honestly, how many times can I say honestly? I could probably just turn this in as an ATC because it has a good weight behind it. But I do like to stabilize my ATCs a little bit more, so I'm going to go ahead and put it on to this piece of cardboard using that extreme adhesive. I use the extreme adhesive because I really want to make sure it sticks down. Kathy likes greens, mustard mostly, and she's a northern girl. I, you know, I honestly, black eyed peas used to not be my favorite thing, but I kind of like them now, so... I'm going to have another sip, sip of champagne. All right. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my Distress Oxides in um, Blueprint Sketch and Salty Ocean. I'm going to start off with Salty Ocean, I think. Get that. Whoops. I'm getting all confused. Um, I use Distress Oxides because they are so easy to blend, and I really like... Um, the colors that I get from them, even though they're the exact same thing as um, the the inks, I, I feel like I get an easier blend whenever I'm blending them onto my surfaces. Oh, and just off the cuff here, uh, Aness, you should be getting your uh, prize soon from uh, the Art Sherpa. I checked with her and she said that they're working furiously to make sure to get that out soon. So be on the lookout for that. And I'm getting my fingers a little inky today, but what's a little art without getting a little inky, right? So I'm going to try and get this pretty even. Like I said, with the Distress Oxides, it's really easy to blend it out nicely. Get it nice coverage. That looks pretty good. So now I'm going to go in with uh, my Distress Oxide, this time in Blueprint Sketch. 
I have to season my pads because they're not exactly well seasoned yet. The more you use them, the more seasoned it gets. It's kind of like a cast iron skillet. And I'm going to go down here towards the bottom and just ink up a little bit down here at the bottom. I may even go back and blend in some more of that salty ocean. We'll see. Basically what I'm wanting to do is make this kind of like an ocean scene. There we go. I think that looks good so far. Put that over there. Take another sip of champagne. Hey, how are you? Welcome. Thanks for joining. All right, so that looks pretty good. I'm going to set that off to the side here. I'm just going to take a paper towel and try to clean up a little bit of this ink. If I was super stingy, I would like try to figure out how to keep it um, saved up somehow. But usually with distress inks and oxides, it's not that big of a deal. There is still going to be some residual ink on there. No, not huge. Not a huge deal. All right. Um, so now what I'm going to do, actually, you know what? That may be a big deal. I just thought about that because I'm going to be working. Hey, Elaine, I'm going to be working with some wet mediums. And whenever you rehydrate uh, the distress inks and oxides, they do, it will move. So you do have to be careful. So I'm going to go ahead and use a baby wipe now that I'm thinking about it. I'm going to use that baby wipe and just make sure that I pick up all of the ink off of the surface because I'm going to take some of this um, textured paste and we're gonna mix up that abandoned coral into it. Yes, my champagne does need to be on a coaster. Uh, Elaine, I'm trying to find my coaster. It got moved and I don't know where it is right now. My lovely coaster that she made me. I have been looking for it. I think I know which box it's in. I'm just not 100% sure at the moment. All right, so what I'm gonna do now, uh, I cut a stencil of some coral. I'm gonna use this abandoned coral, uh, living coral in a very literal way. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put this coral onto my little piece here. Where's my tape? I'm gonna grab my tape and I'm gonna put two pieces on it. I'm gonna use this purple tape to tape it down. Uh, this purple tape is supposed to be really good for releasing. Um, I've, I've been told it, it's a really great one. It's kind of like washi tape, and it allows you to um, pull things off easily without tearing uh, your piece up. So I've been told. I'm still kind of experimenting yet. Don't know if I can um, suggest it as one of your like crafting uh, must-haves, but I, it's looking like it. All right, let's stick that right there. I think right about there. Oops, it moved a little bit. And of course I mess everything up. You know, it wouldn't be the off-kilter crafter if I didn't get it on, you know, off-kilter, right? <laughs> All right, that looks good there. I need to move this other piece of tape. Um, let's put it right here. Okay, so I have my stencil now centered over the piece where I want it. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my palette knife. I'm going to take my Distress Oxide, and I'm using some Ranger Texture Paste. This is the Opaque Matte. So it's whenever it dries up, it kind of looks like like a frosting or whipped cream or something. Of, like it's, it's very light and fluffy and... All that kind of jazz. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it down onto, I think I'm going to use about that much. If I need to, I can go back into my jar and get some more, which we will be doing in a moment, but I want to get started with this. I'm going to take my Distress Oxide and I'm just going to um, press it onto my craft mat here. And what that's going to do is uh, I can take my uh, texture paste and I'm just going to start slopping it around on my board here or on my mat, I should say. Now, whenever you're working with texture paste, always make sure that you have water nearby or um, you're gonna be going to the sink soon or something like that because 
you need to make sure that this gets uh, washed off quite quickly. If you leave it on your stencils, if you leave it on your stamps, if you leave it wherever, um, it can harden and then it makes it really, really hard uh, to get it off. You may end up damaging your um, product and you don't want that to happen. I am using one of Sherpa's red palette knives. I love this knife. It has such great bend, um, this, which is perfect for what I'm doing right now, which is mixing up all of this texture paste. Uh, so it's a really, really great medium for that. All right. I think we're getting pretty close. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to start scraping it up. And I'm going to go straight onto my stencil and just start spreading it out, kind of like you're frosting a cake. And it's okay that the stencil's pulling up a little bit. I probably should have put more tape on it. Got a little bit up at the top there. That's not a big deal. I'll probably just leave it. So I'm going to spread this out over my thing. I want it kind of thick. So I'm going to try and gently kind of push it into that stencil. No worry, Taz. I know I'm going uh, live pretty late for you, and I apologize for that. I see Mark is here out of the corner of my eye. I am kind of paying attention to the chat at the moment. I am really focused on what I'm doing here, though. So if I missed your comment, I apologize. If I missed your question, I also apologize. You can kind of see where my eyes are at as I'm working. So if you have a question, uh, you can always try to put it into the chat right as I'm looking at it. All right. So I think we're going something like that. And I'm going to peel away my stencil. And I'm going to dunk that, not into my champagne, <laughs> but into my water. And that will just cure right there. So I didn't get it quite perfect, but honestly, it doesn't matter a whole bunch. You get the idea of what's going on with it and how it's going to look. I am going to just quickly take my finger and glide off the edge here. I don't want that sticking onto my uh, piece. All right. So... Let me zoom in and let y'all take a look. Make sure I don't get some uh, texture paste onto my mouse. Close up cam, there we go. So that's what it looks like right now, not too bad. I am gonna take my Art Sherpa fan and just apply some uh, fan to that. It doesn't take very long for this paste to dry, but I wanna try and get that drying process started a little bit. Now, since I do have my paste out and I have everything messy and all of that, I'm going to start working on my second ATC. I found this background whenever I was doing some cleaning. I found the background and thought, mm, why not? Let's use this for um, one, of, one of our ATCs. I'm going to take this. This is a Dilutions Mini Stencil. I'm going to grab some more paste. Clean off my palette knife so that way I don't contaminate it. I probably could use that still, um, but I'd rather not contaminate my container. I'm going to slop some more paste onto my board here, onto my mat. There's a little bit more. This is probably too much, uh, but honestly, this jar is going to last me for a long time, so not a big deal. Hey, Mona, thanks for joining me. Happy New Year, Mark. Happy New Year, um, Taz and Courtney and Mark. And we're going to take some more of the abandoned coral. Put it right there. Put that in there. Do, 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 do. So um, this is just, uh, this is a piece of cardboard with a... Um, piece of uh, scrapbook paper. I have a scrapbook paper pack that is like celestial. And so I'm using that for today's artwork. Do, 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 do. This is actually one of my favorite parts of working with the texture paste. I love kind of manipulating it. 
and getting that color spread through it. And um, we're using that Living Coral, Pantone's color of the year. So we're spreading it out. There we go. Pretty good. That looks pretty well mixed. I'm going to grab my purple tape again. And just stick it onto the back. Grab a little bit more. So that way I get either side as well. All right. I think I want, yeah. So I want my ATC to go like that. So I put my stencil down. Like so. Hope everybody's having fun with this. Guys, don't forget to also go follow all of the other design team members like Mark. Uh, we really appreciate y'all taking the time to check out our videos. And if you want to be a part of the ATC swap group, you can. Uh, it's a lot of fun and it only costs a loose postage stamp and the postage to send it. So it's pretty fun, pretty fun, very cheap. And if you want to become a member of the ATC swap group, you can do that too. And that just saves you on having to send the loose, loose postage stamp. And you also have the opportunity to get one of the design team members ATCs. So someone out there, if you are in the ATC group and are an ATC group member and have paid your membership fees, you could possibly get this one or the other one that I'm making. So I'm just going to swipe this into all the little cracks and crevices. And I'm trying very hard. I'm not doing a very good job of it, but I'm trying very hard not to end up scratching into the um, pieces here because I want a nice smooth. There we go. All right. Everybody see how that's nice and smooth now? There was a moment where I was like, are you able to take off autofocus? I, I can't. I'm sorry. Um, this I'm still learning about this this camera and how it works and all that kind of stuff. So um, I need to do some more research on how to make that happen. All right. So I think we're pretty good there. Ooh, look at that. That's a fun one. Once again, I am going to take my finger along the edge, just making sure that this is all because you don't want this hanging off the side. Otherwise, um, whenever it dries, you could end up having some pieces just like hanging off and they're like hard as rocks. So you don't want that to happen. It seems to be behaving itself a little better. I think every time it's like when I come up is when it, it auto focuses weird. So I apologize about that guys. All right. So I'm going to stick the stencil in the water, not in the champagne. So that way I don't have to worry about it drying. I'm also going to take my baby wipe and start cleaning off my surface here. I don't want it to dry on my surface or my palette knife. So give me just a second to do a little cleanup work. Talks amongst yourselves. Wish each other a happy new year, all that good stuff. Move this out of the way. Hopefully these are, hopefully the first one we come back to, oh, it's already starting to dry, so it always worries me whenever that happens. Um, the good thing about this mat is I can literally throw it into the uh, washing machine, and I could probably get it all off. Wouldn't be a big deal. That's what I love. This is the Ken Oliver um, mat. I think it's something like Ken Oliver's most incredible mat or something of that nature. I love it. Best mat I've ever owned. Um, it's freaking awesome. 
Taz jinxed it? That's funny. All right. That seems to be pretty good. I am slightly worried because my stencil is sticking out of the water a little bit. But I think it'll be okay. I think we'll be fine. Sippy sippy, right? All right. Throw the tape away. Grab a paper towel. What's funny, guys, is today I'm using, like, an ironing board as my uh, station over here. And I kind of wish I had it all the time because it, it stends out further than my shelves do. And uh, makes it a lot easier for me to grab things. All right. So, I think we're getting close. All right. So, let me see if I can do close-up cam. And there's that one. And there's that one. I'm going to grab my Art Sherpa fan. Yeah, so, yeah, that's exactly what's happening. It's it's trying to catch my hand and not the art. But it seems to be doing an okay job at the moment, so I think we're okay for now. So what I'm doing is I'm using my Art Sherpa fan here, and I'm just going to add some air and try to dry these a little bit more it usually does not take long for this paste to uh to dry <laughs> all right elaine don't let those people of walmart look at you weird i get that i i don't typically step foot into walmart to be honest Did I forget? Oh, Mona, thank you for pointing that out to me. I will make sure to put her information in uh, after I get off of live here. I knew I, f I had forgotten it earlier, and uh, she, she was upset, which is perfectly reasonable. I can't believe I did it in the description as well. I basically copied and pasted it into my description, and that's what happened. So um, I will make sure to put Taz's information uh, into the description after I get off of live here. As soon as I finish here, I'll put it in over there. I love this little fan. It works very, very nicely. It is a lovely little fan. Uh, also, since um, Taz, since you have a wrench, you are able to put in links. So please link yourself uh, in this chat as well. Please feel free to do so. I don't even know if you can hear the fan. It's very quiet. Taz, I'm glad you forgive me because I feel really bad. <laughs> I forgot to check on that before I went live today. Bad Ian. Bad Ian. What a way to start off 2019. It is a cool fan, literally. All right, let's check on how this is doing. Oh yeah, we're getting pretty dry pretty quick. Yeah, that's almost dry, guys. It doesn't take long for this paste to dry at all. All right, I think we're actually good enough to continue on. So I'm going to set off this ATC, ATC to the side and uh, see if I can start working on this one. Let me see if I can get rid of that little paste up there at the top. Yeah, it's not as visible now. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I have little fishies that I used my Cricut back there to cut out. I did a print then cut with those. And so I'm going to add these into my little ocean scene. I also have a, uh, so I'm just as guilty as all of you on not using supplies that you've bought. I bought some of these um, Dilusions uh, paint pens. I don't even know how long ago I bought them. And 
it was uh it was an impulse buy and i i i've never used them i've had them for over a year probably closer to a year and a half and i've never used them Hey, Denise, thanks for joining us. Mark was asking about cutting stencils on your machine. Nikki, perfect. You can use your Cricut machine to cut your stencils. Um, I would pull it out of the water, but it's in, it's in the water right now. So, yeah, you can use a Cricut machine to make your own stencils um, using some acetate. Cricut sells acetate. Um, I just save packaging. Uh, if you can actually look down there, there's a whole bunch of plastic packaging from, like, those... Um, uh, uh, I keep wanting to say bullet, but like um, form mold packaging um, when you buy products and stuff. Uh, I, that's what I used to make today's stencil was that packaging. So I feel like I'm going to have to sneeze, guys. So bear with me if I end up sneezing. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I think I'm going to take some uh, of my paint pen. These are the D Dilutions paint pens. And what I'm going to do is, is that supposed to look like that? I'm wondering. Yes, it is supposed to look like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do um, to get these paint pens started, what you do is you don't push and pump them. You just literally push on them to start the flow of paint. It has, to, it has a chamber in here, and that paint has to flow into the chamber. I'm, I'm watching it. I can't show you all, unfortunately, but it's literally dripping into that chamber. And as the paint gets used up, you have to every now and again do that again. Don't pump it, she says. Just hold it for a little bit to get it started. She says that, and then mine is not starting. We'll go a little bit lar longer, see if it works. I can see the paint coming into the nozzle. It just needs a little bit more. I feel like I'm waiting for paint to dry. There it goes. All right. There we go. I hope it... Is it closed? There it goes. All right. There we go. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my blue pen. And I'm just going to add some subtle kind of wave formations. Whoops. Fan fell over. I don't know if this is going to do much, but I just feel like it needs some sort of kind of movement in the background indicating that, you know, Currents are happening, waves are happening, stuff is happening. And I'm trying to be as random as possible. But, you know, sometimes it's weird because the human eye wants to make things symmetrical and perfect. So it's sometimes hard to do that. All right, something like that. What do you think? Not perfect, but maybe it's some blue worms swimming through the area. I don't know. That's what it could be. Uh, Taz, that's a good question. I'm not sure if these are movable by water. Um, I don't think they are, but I could be completely wrong on that one. I have not experimented enough with these. Like I said, this is the first time I'm actually using them. So I'm not exactly sure what they're capable of doing. I also have somewhere in these drawers back behind me, I have a, a lot of the Dilutions paint, um, which the fluid paint, and I need to actually do something with them. 
I bought them and then they ended up in the drawer and I've never been able to use them. I haven't used them. I'm, I'm guilty of buying stuff and then not using it. It happens. Uh, looks good to you. Excellent. Happy New Year. Lots of positive vibes sent my way. Thank you very much. Wish for your health, joy, prosper. Sounds like I'm quoting something from Star Wars. <laughs> it does, but may the force be with you. I'm all about that. All right, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab my art glitter glue. Uh, love this stuff. This is a great adhesive. Um, I always put a pin in it because that's the way that you close it with the fine tip nozzle. I'm going to add a little bit of the glue onto the back of my little fishies. There we go. I say that, and then it, like, is clogged. <laughs> I'm getting enough of it through that it's... Oh, there it is. All right. Woo, yep. Lots of glue there. Lots and lots of glue. <laughs> Always guilty of buying new things and then not using it. Taz, I tell you. I think every single person in this chat and in this video ever, we all are guilty of doing that. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to stick my little dude right there. And yes, this fish is exactly like Dory. And yes, I did do that on purpose. This is actually an image that is um, multi-layered, so there are several layers to it. And I just um, flattened it in Cricut Design Space to make it a printable image that I could then attach. Because this was going to be way too tiny for me to work on paper piecing. I would have, I, I would have gone crazy. <laughs> would have gone crazy. Oh my gosh, my nose is really wanting me to sneeze. Uh, I have moved, I've graduated from just using saline in my nose from my surgery to now having to do uh, sinus rinse, where you shove the bottle up your nose and you squeeze it and push the saline solution from one side of the nose out into the other. And that is not fun, guys. It's not fun at all. Whew. Mona says if she disappears all of a sudden, it means that she lost power. Oh, no, she's got a storm. Mona, you be careful. You take care of you first. You can always come back and check this out on the replay. I saw that you had posted that there was a storm there, uh, and I hope that you are safe and that you do take care. All right, so this, once I get my glue all kind of dried up, Go to close-up cam. Here is the first one. So it's not exactly what you would picture, I think, if you were thinking about awakening. But it, it's, you know, I wanted to play with this uh, living coral. And I really wanted to explore this color. I'm going to be doing a lot of exploration with the living coral color on my channel for the next couple of weeks so please make sure to subscribe so that way you come back and check out all my experiments as i kind of start to explore this color and uh get it into uh get, get into the spirit of the color for 2019 karen says she doesn't like neti pots either man karen oh it is it is not fun doing it let me tell you that. If anybody has ever used a neti pot or done the sinus rinse, you know how uncomfortable it is and how how you have that feeling of it shooting up your nose and you're just like, ooh, it's not a good feeling, not a good feeling at all. So anyways, so that's our very first ATC. Let's put it off to the side, let it dry. We're going to start working on our second one. Where did I put it? Anything that makes me sneeze when I pluck my eyebrows. Another thing that makes me sneeze is when I pluck my eyebrows. I don't think... Plucking your eyebrows makes you sneeze. Okay. All right. That's that's a new one for me. I know when I pluck my nose hairs, it makes me want to sneeze. <laughs> uh, Karen, yes, it does feel like you're drowning. It feels like you're like waterboarded or drowning or something like that. All right, so... Our next ATC that we're going to be working on, let me make sure this is dry. Yep, it's very, very dry uh, already, which is crazy. Uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is I'm going to take this. I cut these circles out on my Cricut, although you could use just about any dye or anything like that. 
and uh, I'm gonna, I made a little eyeball. I'm going to use a distress marker. This is barn door, and I'm going to use the fine tip. And basically, I'm just going to draw some like kind of squiggly lines coming out from the center, going all the way around. I don't want to make it too red because we don't want to make it look like he's been smoking weed or something like that. I'm just going to be putting it around like that. Do, 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 do. YouTube, please don't demonetize me. <laughs> and I think one more like that should work. Please no, not nose hair pulling online. <laughs> yeah, it's not fun. All right. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That looks like a, a regular eyeball, right? That looks pretty close to me. So now I'm going to use that art glitter glue again. I'm going to glue the back of this into the center of my eyeball. Not my literal eyeball, but the eyeball that I'm working on right here. Mona, it is not pleasurable at all. But if it helps me get better, then you know what? I'm going to do it. There we go. That kind of looks like a light bulb, doesn't it? Or light bulb. Wow. God, light bulb. That's your 2019 right there. Uh, an eyeball, looks like an eyeball. And I'm going to glue it right into the center of my piece. I'm, I'm adding a little bit of extra glue on this because I do, you know, there are some crevices here that I want to make sure that that glue gets down inside. And um, you don't, you want to make sure that that glue is getting in there. So I'm going to put that there. Oh, I feel like I need to sneeze. Oh, this feeling is not good. I'm looking into my studio light. What kind of glue is it? It is art glitter glue. It is art glitter glue. You can find it um, over at uh, May May Made It. Um, I also think you can find it on Amazon as well. It is a great glue to have. I do enjoy it. I did not realize how much I would enjoy it until... Um, I, I kind of started working with it and it is great, amazing glue. It dries really, really fast, which is exactly what you need, uh, whenever you're working on projects like this, you need something that sticks pretty, you know, it'll take a little while to fully dry, but to tack down, it's perfect. Oh my God. That's the most amazing glue ever. Yes. Art glitter glue. Buy yourself a bottle. Just make sure to do it, um, when it's warm. If you don't live in a warm climate, you need to buy it when it's warm because otherwise uh, it, it does damage the glue as it gets um, transported from place to place. Denise says, bless you in advance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Yep, it's an eyeball. Eyeball. The light bulbs of our face. <laughs> it's true. It's true, right? Let's go close up again. All right, so here is my two ATCs for the theme of Awakening. We have this awesome kind of, I was going with like the first thing that happens when you wake up is you open your eyes, typically. That's what I normally do. Um, I typically don't run into, I don't like running into walls and stuff whenever I wake up, so... This one is the awakening, literal almost translation of it to me, of being able to open the eyeballs and open your world, open your eyes to the world. Um, so that's kind of what I'm going with this one using the Pantone color of the year. And then we also have uh, the um, uh, kind of awakening with me experimenting with the Pantone color of the year with it being the uh, coral. So experimentation of coral, experimentation of Pantone's color of the year, kind of awakening of that art and that experience. So uh, not exactly what you would think of uh, for this one, whatever you think of awakening, but, you know, kind of 
kind of in that direction and kind of thinking about what all this uh, living coral color can do. So I hope you use that color whenever you're working on art, stuff like that. First thing I do when I open my eyes is go pee. You know, Denise, you are not wrong on that one. Not wrong at all. Most of the time I hold it until I go to the bathroom. But, you know, hey, whatever. Whatever works for you, right? <laughs> oh, man. So, all right. So that's our two ATCs. Uh, only took me about 45 minutes to do that. And probably, like, at least 10 minutes of that was just gabbing, talking, and uh, enjoying, enjoying chatting with all of you. So, uh, pretty... <laughs> Karen says she doesn't even open her eyes for that. Well, Karen, you're very talented then. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's our two ATCs. Like I said, if you're interested in becoming a part of the ATC swap group, um, of course, I don't have my ATCs with me at this moment. They're back there somewhere, somewhere down there. Um, if you're interested in becoming a swap uh, member, you can do so. All the description links are down below in the description. Make sure to check that out. Also, guys, don't forget... For those of you who are cricketeers, I'm doing a cricket giveaway. If you go check out my latest uh, Happy Mail opening, I have a link to do for that giveaway. And if you're international, uh, there's a link for a giveaway there too. So don't forget to go check out that video for some giveaway links and uh, check all those out. Right now, I only have three people in my international giveaway. So the chances are very high for you to get that coloring book from Stephanie Bergeron. Uh, over at Deliberately Creative. She's awesome and gave me another digital copy to give away. So make sure if you are international, go check out that link because you have a pretty high chance of getting to be the winner of that. So, <laughs> May, I know it's so funny. So, so funny. She's very talented. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and end it here. I hope everybody has a great day. Have a great 2019. And uh, as always, make sure to uh, do some art this year. Get, get that onto your to-do list. Make sure to put out lots of art this year. And don't forget that normal is just a setting on the dryer. I hope everybody has a great day. Thank you guys so much for joining me. And go check out the ATC swap from the Art Sherpa. It's a lot of fun. Hope everybody has a great day, and I'll see you very soon. Bye.